And he asked me, he's like, so, so do you get high? I'm like, man, I'm a pizza guy. Of course I get high. Uh, uh, he was like, but do you get like high, high? And I was like, oh. I've, I've done some, <laughs> I've done some psychedelics and stuff in my life or whatever. You're like, you know, Coke's cool. Eyes light up when I say the word coke, and he just starts digging in his sock all of a sudden, and he, and he pulls just out digging this into his sock, looking... like the sock he's wearing. He starts yeah. digging into it. Yeah. Hi, is this Corey? Yeah, yeah, it is. How you doing, Corey? Uh, I'm pretty good, man. How are you? Uh, man, I'm just a gecko on the computer, Corey. Um, what's what's going on with you? Oh, dude, lately I've just uh, been doing the whole work thing. Um, moved back the home after thing. graduating. Yeah, you know, the whole just working, making that money. You moved back home after graduating, and uh, how's how's being at home? Uh, good. Good, dude. I uh, um, moved back in with, like, my, my lifelong buddy who I've, you know, miss especially being being gone for for five years and stuff so um we're we're hanging out and we're we're enjoying being two bachelors you know taking on the world Mm. man that's uh that's cool i know a lot of people we we've talked to some people tonight who are like trying to leave their hometown in search of greater adventure but you seem like you're very much enjoying being being back with your with your homie in your hometown Dude, yeah, and you know what's crazy is that, like, I moved home um, back here where my parents did live, and my parents moved across the country, and so so did both my sisters. So I'm, like, the only one of, like, my family that is still in the hometown, but I'm still, I'm, I'm cool with that. It's it's comfortable, you know, and I think in a couple of years I'm trying to, like, do some, like, really bold traveling uh, go across <laughs> Uh, across the world and, and live in Europe or something like that. But but for now, I'm just uh, kind of relaxing. Yeah, where in uh, where in the world do you want to go see? Dude, so basically, lately I've been experiencing and, and toying with Omegle to like practice socializing and, and learn about uh, people. And man, that's been a lot of fun. Like yesterday I talked to uh, an Irish dude. I talked to a, a uh, Italian who is like going to school in Scotland. He was really cool. And he told me a lot about how cool the Netherlands were and how I should go there and how I should go to Scotland because obviously he's going to school there. So he thought it was really cool. You know, I mean, there's so many places in Europe compared to the States that uh, I think would be would be um, culturally really cool to see. Have you done a lot of traveling before in your life? You know, my mom uh, really, really liked to travel. So growing up, um, I've seen a lot of the 50 states. Uh, I really like Yellowstone. Um, I've been to Hawaii like twice. Um, you know, like there's there's a lot of places. The the, the Black Hills even, just up in, in uh, the Dakotas. Are, are super cool, but yeah, I've done I've done quite a bit of traveling, and I haven't done as much as I'd like to in my my young adult life. And have you gone out of the country before? Uh, you know, I don't think anything more interesting than I think like Mexico sometime before I would even remember, and then maybe uh maybe I went to Canada at some point, but no, nothing else. Man, you know, this is cool. We're about the same age, it seems. And, uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm inspired by you, actually, because you seem like you have a very much a, a, a lust for life. Like, I can really hear it in your voice, you know? you <laughs> I, And I'm, I'm projecting a whole bunch of stuff on you right now, but uh, I <laughs> really like the way that you have this simultaneous appreciation for where you are at this very moment, uh, combined with an excitement for the future and a desire for what's in the future. Like, that's, that's, I mean, that's the most hard, hard balance to strike, right? Because if you get too complacent living in your hometown, you're never gonna, 
you know, improve or experience more or, or, or go out to try to live a colorful life. But if you're always, uh, you know, uh, going on r slash travel and dreaming about only what's out there, yeah. then you miss all the shit that's right in front of your face. And it's the hardest, hardest struggle to balance. And, you know, I, I've only been on the phone with you for five minutes, but it seems like you're doing a really good job at that. Yeah, dude, I love that you have uh, all that to say because, like, one of my biggest inspirations is the show. You should you should check it out. It's an anime called Golden Boy, and it's about this super smart dude who is just a goofy, goofy motherfucker. But he graduate or he's about to graduate like law school or some shit, and he decides to just drop out because he thinks that was gonna be too too cookie cutter of a life for him, and he starts to just travel and go around and do all these like weird odd jobs just for a short period of time just so he can experience it and so he can have a lot of fun learning about something new and he's a real goofy like perverted dude but i mean the show the show's really funny and but it's inspiring in the same in the same regard and i'm happy you kind of hear that in me because i kind of want to be like that like right now dude i have like a music degree (laughs) and right now i'm delivering packages for fedex kind of climbing for like this uh, small dude that's contracted for them. But I love that job, man. Being able to just like drive around and stuff. It's, it's a hell of a lot of fun and see all the animals and whatnot. Mm. Mm. Um, when do you plan on taking your adventures? Do you, do you, how, how much longer do you plan on staying in the hometown for? Um, I think the, the track that I'm making and saving money, I think in a couple of years I could feasibly look into doing something for at least a year. If I wanted to do it longer, I might have to like plan a little differently. But that's but that's about how I want to see the time frames play out. That's nice. Yeah, dude. Like I said, it's it's so interesting to to hear from you. I feel like I'm learning from you. You know, because like you know, a lot of people they would have that mindset of like, ah, oh, I'm driving for you know delivering packages in my hometown this sucks but in two years i have this plan i'm gonna travel the world and and then i'll be happy you know but i i i I love what i'm hearing from you like uh you know in two years uh, i'm gonna travel the world and it'll be exciting but i'm happy right now and i'll be happy then as well you know it's 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 truly like one of the hardest things to do and i'm it's it's really cool to hear it from you yeah man and like you know um uh, I, I had a, a, a couple of years where I didn't think I was going to have like that mindset again. You know, we, in the, uh, the early twenties are, are hard on a lot of us. Uh, and you know, you get into like a, a foggy mindset of, of, you know, of, of FOMA, you know, fear of missing out and stuff. And you, you kind of lock down on yourself, but eventually you just kind of got to appreciate what you got going on. And, uh, obviously strive for something more, but if the, the idea of, of looking that far ahead or, or expecting too much of yourself is stressful, then just, you know, chill out, just be cool with being simple. If you like to be at your computer or if you like to watch shows and, and watch them over and over, and that's like a comfort space for you, you should enjoy that, but always have that kind of mindset that, Hey, I'd like to do more potentially, but only if it's cool. So myself. you say that in your early 20s, so you say that this mindset that you've adopted, it wasn't always like this in your early 20s. You had a lot of FOMO. I mean, tell me about your mindset in those early 20s. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, I guess for I, I dated a girl from like the end of high school from when I, when I was like 17 until I was probably 22. Um, and, and when we broke off, it, that was, that was that, that time. Um, cause I had to kind of relearn independence because I'd be been with somebody who we were, you know, inseparable, like, you know, right, codependent right. kind of relationship, but, but, you know, I want to, I don't want to say a healthy codependent cause you really shouldn't be. Um, and I've learned that that's, that's a hard thing to, to balance in a relationship, but all the same, um, I was used to having somebody like, like tight like that. And so, um, exploring that, that, uh, that loneliness out of, out of kind of nowhere was, you know, where I had to, to decide or like, I guess not decide, but work on that mindset. So. 
Hey, it also says here oh, no. that you wanted to tell me about a time you tried crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's okay. So, uh, like, sidebar, like, I'm I'm insecure about the story because I've told it uh, uh, a handful of times, and to some of my friends, it just seems so outlandish, and I'm sure it's gonna sound so outlandish that it's like a a, a fake story or something, but. Bear with me and just kind you know, of believe I, you it know, Corey, as, I, I, as I tell you. I trust you. I'd like to think that the people listening trust you. You've you've exerted yourself uh, to be a truthful, genuine person. I, I I and I would love to hear the story of you trying crack cocaine. Sick, sick. Okay, so um, went to college in in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm I'm delivering pizzas and sandwiches for this uh, us sandwich shop downtown and um late on like a friday or saturday night or something um i drop um, um a pie up you know somewhere up kind of in the the northern part of, of downtown which is considered the ghetto of the area by like a, a homeless shelter and the dude kind of like comes up to my window or you know gets near my car and is like hey man hey man uh get it can i get a ride and something you know whatever i work here but I just need to get a, a a few blocks down the road or whatever. I'm like, man, it's it's slow at the shop. Uh, I'll kill some time. Yeah, dude, why why not get uh, hop in? And I'm gonna give <laughs> I'm gonna give this dude dude a ride real quick. We end up going driving way further than than I anticipated, up into like North Omaha, way out of my delivery range and stuff. But again, we were slow at the moment, and I didn't want to go do shop work, but. Um, I take him to this place and he's like, Hey, I just need to stop here real quick. And then you'll take me to the actual place. I'm going to go kind of weird, but I, I waited out cause I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't say no to people, uh, very well, but basically comes back out and gets in, gets in the car. Um, and then we, we start driving back pretty much right back to where we were initially. We, we went way further than we needed to. And I had no idea why at the time, but while we're driving back, he starts telling me, these stories about his son coming out of the closet and how he actually found out that through his son deciding that he was gay, that he was willing to explore himself more, all this mm. kind of weird stuff. And I was like, I was like, cool, man, good for you. I, I, I I'm, I'm glad you, you gave your son that uh, love and, and whatnot. And then uh, yeah, we, we get to something else and he, <laughs> and he asked me, he's like, so, so do you get high? I'm like, man, I'm a pizza guy. Of course I get high. Uh, uh, he was like, but you get like high, high, and I was like, oh. I've I've done some <laughs> I've done some psychedelics and stuff in my life or whatever, like you know, coke school. Eyes light up when I say the word coke, and he just starts digging in his sock all of a sudden, and he, and he pulls he out digging this into his sock, looking... like the sock he's wearing. He starts yeah. digging into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I'm I'm telling you, in a couple minutes, you're you're not gonna believe me as a as a person, but. Um, he pull, he pulls out this janky looking crack pipe and and uh, a little baggie that's tied up all in like a Walmart sack or whatever and some crystal looking looking shit and I'm like oh I'm like uh, crack and he's like free base on free base <laughs> I'm mm. like okay crack or <laughs> and I'm I'm an adventure well free base isn't free here. base like that's a combination of crack and that's crack cocaine free free base is free base cocaine eg crack um okay word and you know you, you never say no to never say no to free crack is, is a saying oh. i heard once so uh, way to live. <laughs> but i i suppose but anyway uh so i'm like uh shit okay dude you know what whatever and he's like pull over here here's a good spot or you know kind of guides me to the side of the road and i pull over and the guy says to me um can, can, can I shotgun you? And I don't know if you know what a shotgun is. There's different ways that people do it. Often it's a way people like help people that don't really know how to smoke. Anyway, um, I, I don't ask me why. I, might, I just say, you know, yes, sure, why not? Um, but, but old boy gets all excited. He takes his hit of the, the crack through the, the janky ass pipe, grabs my head by, by you know, the sides of, of my head, plants one on me and blows some crack into my lungs through like a through like a kiss and yeah uh i was just like whoa 
that uh, it, you know to kind of like like lean back actually mistake made i opened my eyes while that was happening and surprisingly i i was disappointed to see that his eyes were closed i think i'd rather see them open like he was concentrated but he was concentrated in a different way anyway um <laughs> i was just taken back and now i'm getting high rather rather quickly i'm like shit um and he goes here 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 you do it to me and i go no but i'll take a hit and he was like okay <laughs> and that was one one and only time i was ever gonna kiss a, a likely homeless guy and you know it's funny actually I, I take my hit you know that's that's the end of that um part but what's funny is it took me years to realize that i probably took him to buy the crap i didn't even ever it didn't ever even occur to me that like the fact that I took him back some weird, like way deep north uh, Omaha spot and then back to where we were, like initially, probably where he lived, probably just gave him like a um, a free 10 minute drive to, to his dealer. So, yeah, yeah anyway, he got um, a lot out of that. He got a buddy to smoke crack with. He got a kiss. Yeah, he did get a kiss. I mean, I, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't use any tongue or anything. Like I told my girlfriend after, um, I simply hung out with him for a little bit let him talk about his life let him explore his sexuality maybe a little bit um and when i took him back and i take him to the the place that looked like some sort of shelter or something um <laughs> and as i'm dropping him off he was just like uh can i have your email address <laughs> i was like you should ask for that i was like no henry or richard i can't remember what his name was but this was i said this was enough adventure for me um i appreciate you man and we, we shake hands or whatever and he said, you know, he says, God bless you. I said, bless you too. And I go back to work and I, I did the shit out of some dishes, man. I was gacked. Corey, Corey, you, I, I, Corey, you are, uh, you're a say yes to life kind of guy, aren't you? Dude, it, and it, it, it rarely, I see, I'm, I'm a lucky guy, man. You, I don't think it's a good idea to, to be that person, kind of like a yes man, so to speak, like the, the movie sure. teaches you. But yeah. But, uh, shit, it, it, it's been good to me to be that type because I've been lucky with the people I've met. And, like, a lot of the times that I've been like that, it's rewarded me. And I've, I've had, uh, I've had a, a good time when I've said yes to things, you know. My girlfriend yeah. was mad at me that night, but, like. She was, she was like, mad at you when you again. told her that like, you kind of. How long was the, was the, was the kiss with this guy? It was as long as it takes to exhale some crack. So, but I don't know. You just—that's very like—it's very giving of you to to let hey, this well, man. I was receiving sort man. of explore yeah. himself with you. I think I think so. Maybe I do. Trust me that it, 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 I don't want to say he didn't ask for consent because he asked me, and like maybe I was thinking, I don't know. I thought maybe he was like. Maybe he doesn't want to touch my dirty crack pipe, so I'm gonna blow it from a distance. I don't know, dude. Sure, uh, right, I, right, right. It, it, it surprised me. I didn't intentionally think like I'm gonna I'm gonna plan one on this guy, but when it happened, it was, it was kind of just what it is, you know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. My sexuality isn't too fragile or or too too. Um, I don't like the actually. I don't like the phrase fragile uh, sexuality just because like you're you're, con you're, you don't you're have confident about who you are and 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 whatnot and that yeah. you know small instances yeah. of things aren't going to make you compromise that you know Corey, i'm uh i i get i don't i don't know why but this story about you um picking up this man and letting him blow <laughs> crack smoke into your mouth via a kiss it's 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 inspiring to me, I don't know everything about you, Corey. I, I, you know the, just your mindset about things is like proving further and further how important that is. You know uh, your perspective on things and whatnot. You seem like you've got a very uh, refined, refined one. And I've been coming to your podcast recently for like. Uh you know, more perspective on life. You know, I think it's interesting how we all can learn something from each other. Or like we all can, you know, look up to the same people that, that you know, look up, so to speak, to to us. It's, it's so, Corey, cycle. crack cocaine, would you do it again? You know, I think you're not supposed... I think that, like, 
I, like you like the the one well, quote I said earlier where I stole from Jack. But... You're not supposed to, but like crack. You never say no to crack once, but like you know, second time, maybe maybe not. Because then uh, there's there's a reason you came back. Like that was the same thing with like whippets and meth and you know, anything else I've ever tried. It's always do it once if it's like considered that super dangerous thing. And obviously you'll you'll probably have fun, but you can't you can't go back to it. Well, Corey, you've got a very fun life ahead of you, and um, you know I wish you the best of luck in living it to the fullest. Thanks, man. Thank you so much for having me on. It was it was fun to be able to to, to throw that one out there. Take care, Corey. Hey, bless, man. Take it easy. Whew. What a great, what a great call. What a great call. That call had everything in it. I am genuine. I'm inspired by Corey. In many ways. Um. Really, I am. I'm. I. 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 I mean it. He. He. Uh. Just like. Had so much. Of I've been thinking I have been thinking nonstop and I've been thinking this throughout most throughout a lot of my life uh, about how about a lot of these these things that Corey has been exemplifying right the ability to be content with where you are in the present moment while still working toward the future the ability to have a positive mindset about all it is that happens to you. And he just exemplified that in such a cool way that I really jived with. Hmm. And you know what? Honestly, you know what? I've been thinking about these concepts for all of my life. And I think I've discovered through Corey that the answer is crack. Maybe that's why he is the way he is. And maybe I should give it a try. Folks, if you learn anything from listening to this, it's that crack is not that bad. Kiana? Hello. How are you, Kri Kiana? I almost called you Kriana, which is pretty damn close to Kiana, so I don't feel that bad about it. Pretty close. <laughs> Uh, what's going on, Kiana? Not a lot. Um, just hanging out, watching your stream. Uh, is there anything in particular you want to talk about? Yeah, basically, I've just been feeling like kind of an imposter. Like, I put on um, kind of a costume, but in more of a professional way, I guess, when I go into work. And when I come home, I kind of like to just get blackout drunk and smoke a bunch of weed. And in the mornings, I go and work at the kindergarten class. And I don't know, I just kind of feel bad about it in a way. But I don't because I can still get my shit done at work. But So you feel as though the identity that you project when you're teaching kindergarten, are you, when you say you have a kindergarten class like you teach kindergarten or you just work at a at a at a school in some other capacity i work at a school so i'm an education assistant so i work with the students that um have extra needs and need extra help so mm -hmm. kind of like grade one through four okay and so you're working with children all day and you feel like that contrasts with you getting blackout drunk and smoking a bunch of weed after work. Right. Yes. I'm also the youngest there, which puts a really big divide. Like, I started doing this when I was 21. I'm 25 now. And not a lot has changed. Like, summer breaks, I like to go camping, go in the woods, do some acid with my friends. Like... I don't feel like it really bothers what I do at work, but I also feel like if anyone found out, like, I don't know, especially parents and everything like that, like, I don't want to go out in public or drink at the bar or whatever. So, aside from this sort of feeling as though it contrasts with your identity at work, 
does anything else bother you about your drinking and smoking habits? Um, not really. I mean, not really, no. Like, it doesn't affect at work at all. I well, okay. Well, I don't let's think take, I let's can take, I want to take just, just to take to take work out of it, like your okay. other aspects of your life, your your general mental well being, your relationships, family, whatever whatever else you got going on. You know, do do you feel as though it's being negatively impacted by by your drinking and smoking? And I'm, I'm not I'm not. This isn't a leading question. I'm not here to say it is. I'm I'm just curious. No, totally. Um, I. Think that it's gotten out of the hand in the past, where it's like blackout every night. It's gotten a little bit better, um, but just like social anxiety is a whole. Like I don't even want to go grocery shopping. I just, I don't know. Have you uh, spoken to a real therapist about this? Absolutely, yes. What do they? And say? I know that they can't really give a lot of advice as much as just kind of guide you through it so it's kind of nice just to like talk to like a person just to yeah sure yeah well, what, they well, what did say, your like yeah what do they say just to kind of cut back on it keep more track on it I don't really eat a lot either so that kind of negatively impacts it but um, just to keep track of everything and cut down I was supposed to call a place to talk about the alcohol and stuff, but I haven't, but. Would you, when you say you're supposed to call a place, what is this, what is this place? Um, it's kind of, it's the provincial, like I live in Canada, so there's provincial buildings in places and they kind of offer free services. And I've been through there a few times before, not for like addictions or anything, but I've seen many psychiatrists and I've talked to a lot of places and, it's been going really well for me. We've got, like, a good plan going on and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It just feels so conflicting. Like, I'm so different from my other coworkers. Like, it's hard to bond any relationships or... I don't know. Things like that. Well, I'm okay, so to touch on that a little bit, you say that you're very different from your coworkers. In In what way do you feel like you're different from your coworkers? Um... One of the ways is being quite younger. Like, I'm the youngest of all of them by at least 10 years. And that's kind of tricky. Yeah. I think that's, like, one of the main ways is I'm just, like, so much younger. And, like, I know I'm inexperienced and I'm trying to learn from them and everything. Do you have a strong desire to connect more heavily with them? Um, it gives me so much anxiety. Honestly, on my lunch breaks, I go into my car and I drive around the corner and I spend my lunch break around the corner because it's just, I don't know, it's freaky. Mm. Um, but I see it and I guess the desire is kind of there, but I don't know how it would work. I feel like it wouldn't work. Interesting. Okay, so now you've got me curious about this. So you have social anxiety with talking to your coworkers. You seem like, as as you're saying, as you're telling me, you have sort of general social anxiety. But now, with the kids, how do you feel when you're interacting with the kids? It's so different. I feel like I couldn't work with adults. Um, with the kids, it's so much different. I love the way their mind works. Like, they're the problems that they have actually make sense. Like, you see an adult with all their problems, like, just bullshit petty stuff. It's like, okay, come on, you can work it out. But kids, they're actually struggling with stuff, and you can kind of really understand from their point of view. And it's just, it really changes working with kids. Could you give me an example of of sort of a problem that a kid was having that you felt like a... a more real problem than a, a typical adult problem? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, for example, like, just developmentally, 
you know, if something's out of place or something spills or um, somebody called you a poo-poo butthead. If you're 30 years old, you know, you can kind of work those things out. You pick up the mask, you can be upset or whatever. But especially the kids that I work with who have autism and just different um, developmental delays or what you call it, um, this is a big deal for them. And like bright lights, flashing, like flashing lights, loud sounds, big pops, things like that. Um, or just as simple as they're someone calling them a word, a bad name. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hmm. So I, I find it interesting. We work on it that, through birth ends. Yeah, yeah. So, so the level of anxiety that you get, uh, you know, interacting with people your age, the those sort of feelings that you have, n- none of them occur when you're interacting with with the kids. Correct. Yeah, they could be screaming, flipping chairs over. Um, everything just kind of turns off, and I'm just really in the moment. Yes. But yeah, outside yeah. of work, it's hard to Yeah, get. I was about to say, yeah. it's like, again, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some armchair gecko therapy here, but, uh, you know, I can, I can relate a lot because, uh, you know, it seems like you have a lot of kind of chaos going around in, in your life and a lot of aspects of it. But when you're, yeah. you know, working with these kids... It's, as you say, very in the moment. And so you're not focused on all this chaos and all this anxiety over, you know, what, what, what probably seems like an endless amount of things that there are to be anxious over. And you're just there helping the kid and sort of occupying their headspace as well, wherein yeah. the problems are very much immediate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Interesting. Do you consider yourself an alcoholic? Hmm, that is a really interesting question that I've been asked a lot. Um, I think, like, if money is tight and I can't drink, I won't, and it's fine. It's not a problem. I'm not, like, itching for it or anything like that. But at the same time, when you look at... um, what they recommend, like, for how much Canadians should drink or whatever per week and what is considered at risk alcoholic. I'm definitely in that at risk, for sure. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so you're in that at risk category, but you're not, I, I, I don't know what this, I, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know if there's like some sort of objective, uh, standard of you are an alcoholic you are not an alcoholic type of i like to be drunk every night okay um hmm. do you ever do you ever get drunk and go to work no never okay i don't even smoke weed before work do would, would you ever see yourself getting to that point no honestly no I have nightmares every night just being late, like about being late to work. Mm. Definitely. Right. So you have this as like a a sort of anchor point of something that's very important to you that you don't want to compromise or that you don't even see yourself being yeah. able to compromise because it's that important to you. Right. Yes. And I don't want to compromise it by someone just like finding out who I am. <laughs> So you're worried about people finding out about your uh, drug use? I guess so. Um, have they ever gotten close to finding out? No, never. Hmm. You know, I'm a big proponent of the idea that there isn't a true self i've talked about this a bunch right so like look you getting blackout drunk and smoking a bunch of weed like you know yeah that's that's a part of you that definitely is it in a way who you are but also you helping out autistic children to 
feel better and I'm sure being a, a strong pillar of comfort and support in their lives and doing that is a good thing and being in the moment of that uh, is also who you are. So I don't know if there is a a true self. Like, there, there isn't even a... That's my thing about being an imposter is like... Right. You're 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 kind of both, you know. They're 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 both the part of who you are. So one doesn't necessarily negate the other. I don't think. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. Um. Yeah. Thank you. For sure. For sure. Have you been? I mean, uh, is that something you have been feeling? Like, do do you ever feel like? what you do outside of work d- negates what you do in work? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like if like a parent was like, oh, she's like bringing all these beer cans to the recycling or smoking all this weed or like is kind of a mess at home or like anything. Like if they just got to know my true self. Right, but that right there, uh, like literally what you just said, literally what you just said, if they got to know my true self, like you're labeling you with the beer, but that's what you do. You're labeling you with the beer cans and the getting high and black. You're labeling that as your true self, which it is. It is. I I mean, this is just me and my philosophy. Like that is who you are. But but you helping these autistic children. The way in which you're making their lives better, that's that's also your true self. I don't think that one is more true than the other. So I think it, yeah, it's a fallacy really to label true. that as true. Yeah, you're right. I was wording it like that. And no, that makes a lot of sense. That's not like just who my true self is at all. Mm-hmm super passionate about what I do and I take it super seriously and yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah you are and that's 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 true and that doesn't get negated by whatever it is you do outside of that I feel like people deal with I deal with this myself is like for whatever reason we beat the fuck out of ourselves and we go you know we we completely negate all the th- I d- I do it myself. I'm I, again. I'm I'm talking to myself here when I'm talking to you, as well. Is uh, you know, negating all the good stuff you do, not even thinking about it, focusing on all the times you you fuck off or you're late or you smoke too much weed or jack off too much or do what whatever it is you do, and you go, that's the true self, and you completely ignore all the good stuff that you do. And you go, well, sure, I do that stuff, but that's not who I really am. I'm really all the bad shit. And it's like, you can't just run away from that's the bad true. shit and that's pretend like you shit. never do it. You know? And you can't go, well, then that bad shit matters because of all the good shit. You can't do that. But you can't go, none of the good shit matters because of all the bad shit either. Yes, that is true because that's bullshit. You're mm-hmm. right. So, you know, I hope you operate... Uh, you know, it sounds to me like you're... You have a desire uh, to, I don't get blackout drunk less and smoke weed less. Um, right. And I think that you should pursue that desire. But uh, as you're pursuing that desire, you, you can't like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think you can like beat yourself up into beating it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, as you're pursuing that, I don't think you should completely throw away all the good stuff you're doing and uh, fail fail to recognize it in the process. Yeah, that's true. Can't lose, can't lose sight of that. Thank you very much. For sure. For sure, Kiana. Is there anything else you want to talk about in life, in the world, before we go? That is about it. Thank you. Beautiful. Good luck. Yeah, Talk cool. to you soon. Yes. Yes, yes. Goodbye. Hello? Yawn? Yes, this is Yawn. How are you, Yawn? 
I'm great, Gek. How are you doing? Uh, Yarn, it says here you would like to you would like to you would like to discuss any and Audi vaginas. Yes, any and Audi coochie. Uh, okay, sure. Uh, uh, do you, uh, you wanna you wanna sort of start by giving me your initial thoughts? So, um, get first. Um, personally, would you say you're an any or Audi Coochie type of guy? Uh, do you mean in my in my personal like sexual preference? Yeah. You know, I want to be perfectly honest with you, Yawn. I did not know that there was such a thing as any and Audi coochie. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know either. One of my friends told me. But um, I say all that to say this. So I have a girlfriend that I love very much. Sure. And um, in my own personal preference, I am a any coochie type of guy. Okay. But she has an Audi coochie. Mm-hmm. And um, I love her. But I can't deal with it. And she there there's a procedure I can she can go through called a vaginoplasty. Vaginoplasty. Um, and I would I'm willing to pay for it, but she's very sensitive and I don't want to hurt her feelings. So I'm trying to like mm. figure out a way that I can convince her to get this vaginoplasty. Mm. So wait a minute. Okay, so you told me just now that you yourself did not know that there was a distinction between uh any vagina and Audi vagina so but but that you learned it from your friend so if you didn't even know that there was a distinction how would you even know that you had a preference this was beforehand this was like 2 years ago okay so yeah. I have a few thoughts about this, but let me ask you first: Have you have you talked to your partner about this at all? Not yet. Mm-hmm. She's a very well, sensitive woman. Sure, sure, sure. I think here's the thing: At the end of the day, and I'm sure you know this, and so don't need me to tell you this. You know, you you can't really uh, compel somebody to. Uh, you know, do something with their body that they don't want to do, of course. Um, of course. So, I mean, look, knowing he that, says, accepting um, that. He loves me so. Uh, what, what were you going to say? He said what? What were you going to say? You see, he's always telling me how much he loves me and she would do anything for me. And I just don't know, does this cross the line or is this within those boundaries? Ooh, you know what you got to do? You got to find find you got to find something about your body that she wants to fix, right? And then you guys can do a little bit of a bargain. But like an eye for an eye? Yeah, an eye for an eye. Like, I don't know, maybe she likes maybe maybe, maybe you have small balls, right? And you find out that uh-huh. your girlfriend likes big balls and you find that there's a procedure uh-huh. that enlarges the testicles and you say to her Okay, if you flip your coochie, I'll increase my balls. And she goes, deal. And you go down to the surgery place together, and it's like a date. And everything goes smoothly. But you would have to ask her if there's anything about your body that she doesn't like in order to find what that thing is. She does say my ball size is below average sometimes. She has said that. She says that? And I would be willing to do that for her. Okay, then that's what that's the approach I would take with it is some some form of uh, of bargain. Okay, thank you, Gick. I appreciate it. Of course. That. Have a good night, Yon. Have a good night. Any and Audi Coochie. I did not know that that was such a thing. I did not know that that was such a thing. I know there's any and Audi belly buttons. I myself have a deep, deep innie. Hello, Veronica. Oh my god, hi. Veronica, it says here that you had an encounter with the guy working at the front desk. Apparently he was flirting with you, and you felt kind of awkward about it. 
This is uh, I like yes. talking about these things, these little these little micro interactions that we have. You know, platonically, these micro interactions we have are already so awkward and complex to navigate. But when you add this whatever romantic <laughs> sexual overtone over it, it, it just uh, makes it about a hundred <laughs> times worse. So. No, what, I agree. What, uh, the break, break it down for me. Okay. So, I mean, I've been going to the gym for a while now, and I've seen this guy at the front desk, and I've been like, oh, he's cute, but never really noticed him before, like, too much. Mm. Sorry, I'm getting water because I'm parched and nervous. No, I'll, I'll drink um, some, too. <laughs> but um, I never really quite noticed him before. And then uh, the other day, I was struggling with a machine and I'd never used like this specific machine before and I could not get this motherfucker loose like I could not get it in the position I wanted so I was um tugging at it and tugging at it and I'm realizing I look stupid like for one my arms are jelly already and I'm looking real dumb so I start laughing at myself and I tug at it and I look over and this front desk boy is laughing at me and I like shook my head, laughed it off, tried again, could not get it, still could not get it. So I give, I look over at him and he's still looking at me. I give him a look like, are you going to help me or what? So then he comes over and he helps me and he shows me how to do it. And I was like, oh, thanks. Got it. Got it now. And then later when I'm leaving, he goes, um, so now at least you know how the machine works. And, um, I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I I got it now. Thanks. Like in a kind of like exasperated, like, yeah, thanks. I'm an idiot. And, um, shoot, what did he say after that? Um, sorry. I'm like really nervous, Gecko. I'm so happy. Okay. So, so, all right. (laughs) Sorry. So listen, so, so, so you have a crush on this guy, right? I guess so. I mean, this is like the first time I'd ever like really know some, I just thought he was cute. I think it was the fact that like, he like started to flirt with me and then I felt like this pressure and like I'm I'm very comfortable in myself it's not anything like I don't I, I don't even know that I've only interacted with him a couple times you know but it's sure. well here's the thing well here's the thing is um are, are you hoping that he makes some form of a of a reach out to you to whatever, get your number, Snapchat. I am so happy. I mean, I am so happy single right now. But I was okay. like, it would be fun to flirt with him just like when I see him at the gym or whatever. But yeah. um, no, I'm really happy single. But it's like the idea that now I have this build up like, oh, what if, what am I going to say to him? Like, what is he going to say to me? Type right. Of thing. You're enjoying, and then like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. You're like, you're just enjoying you're existing in this realm of tension, and uh, you know I know well, that you say you. Well, hold on. You're you're existing in this realm of tension. Well, hold on. Okay, you're existing in this realm of tension, and you're saying you don't know how to flirt properly. That's what that's what you told the call screener. But yeah, you appear not to. Be really, if, if I'm reading what you're telling me correctly, you appear not to really be all that interested in advancing this to anything, and that you're merely no. enjoying the tension for tension's sake. I guess so, yeah. Gotta feel a little something. <laughs> so, in that case, you know. Feel the tension for the tension's sake, right? That's true. You you don't have to really do anything to to yeah. uh, quote, as you say flirt properly. You're just enjoying yeah, your romanticization want, of like what this guy fear. might think of you. Well, hold on. You're enjoying yeah. this romanticization of what this guy might think of you, of what could be. You're just you're just enjoying the daydreams for the sake. of... Of the daydreams. And now I don't think there's anything wrong with daydreaming. Unless. If the daydreaming. Eventually gets to some point. Where you feel like. It's having some. Unpleasant. Effect on you. Or if it's compelling you to take action. Of some sort. But. As of now you just seem to be enjoying it. For for the sake of it. I hear you. Yeah. 
Yes, I think that's true. And it's I'm definitely not really looking for anything right now, you know. Um, so, but I did do the whole thing. I see it's the thing I romanticized it in my head. Like I was going on Instagram trying to figure. I don't know. I don't even know his name. So I was trying to see if I could figure out his name or something. Um, I don't know. But uh, I guess I'll just have to ask him. I guess that'll be the next point of attention, I suppose. I think that that sounds like a much better idea than trying to find out his name on Instagram. (laughs) I'm not the only one who does that, though. Like, I know that's a normal thing. (laughs) Thank you for calling, Veronica. It was nice talking to you, Gek. Hello? Hello? Hey, is this John? Uh, yeah. What's up, John? Not much. How about you? Um, well, uh, it's, uh, I don't, I don't know, the vibe tonight is definitely very interesting. It's definitely very self, it's very, the vibe tonight is very self-helpy for every single person involved in this, in this operation right now. Um, and, you know, look, I'm rolling with it here. Um, John, what's, uh, what's new? Is there anything in particular you wanted to talk about today? Yeah, you know, it was, um, you know, it's not long ago that Valentine's was, and yeah, had some, uh, but not a nice experience uh, this year with Valentine's Day, and I want to a little bit talk about that. You had a not nice experience with Valentine's Day, you said? Yes. What was the, What was this not nice experience? So, I'm together with my current girlfriend for like one half years. And yeah, we basically said this year we wouldn't, yeah, we basically we set a limit for how much money we would spend on our presents. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so basically because flowers are expensive, um, I pretty much just bought her uh, flowers and some chocolate, pretty much. Okay. And yeah, she was not very happy with it. She she was very, better to say, angry with me because she told me she would rather have some um, yeah crystals and so because she is in the and so. Okay, so hold on. So let me get this straight. So so you guys set some sort of cost limit on your gifts. You got her flowers and chocolate, and she yeah, was, was angry for, because yeah. she was angry because y- y- she, you didn't get her what she wanted. Yeah, pretty much. John, how long have you been seeing this girl for? One and a half years. And basically we are... The thing is... Um, I was living in a pretty rough situation with my family. Yep. And I was, we texted for a long time and met up. And basically, I moved with her to to her and her mom. And yeah, I'm now living with her and are pretty much together with her for one and a half years. All right. So you're having this one issue with her. Do you have issues with her consistently? Many, 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 issues. many issues. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So you have many, many issues with her. This isn't just the one, and you're living with mm. her, which is a whole thing no. to have to get out of. Yeah, um, I'm living with her, and I don't know, John. Listen, I'm not here to tell anyone whether or not they should break up with their significant other, but. Hmm. Do you have a job? I'm thinking about it, to be honest. Yeah, I have a job. Sure. I'm you in have a job? IT. You're in IT? Uh, where do you live? Like, what uh, what place in the universe? Germany. You don't have to give me your address. Germany. Um, do you make enough money to go out and live by yourself or, or find a roommate and live with them? Yeah, definitely. But the, the thing is, it wouldn't be so bad if it just was one thing. But, you know... There are multiple things that are pretty annoying. This, I, and I can't talk about with her about it because my 
the thing is, I moved out because of my my mom was not the nice person to me, you know. And it's like the same. It's like I'm facing my own mother when I talk with her. Pretty much, she's screaming at me, and she's not very nice. John, I don't like this, man. I don't like that. Uh, it seems like you sort of left one bad situation uh, for another one. Pretty much, and it's it's not it's very stressing me out. Pretty much. So what is what you is know? stopping you from what do you what do you feel like is stopping you from breaking up with this girl and moving into uh, another place? You know. The thing is, pretty much, she, I, I care about her pretty much, and, but the thing is, I don't know, you know, it's like, I know if I would do that, I know her that she has some self-harm experience in the past, and I don't really want, you know, that that shit happened, that she would hurt herself or something like that, you know? John, you talked to a real therapist about this? Uh, I am pretty much... <laughs> funny thing, I would uh, visit my ther- uh, therapist for the first session, and he got, uh, yeah, COVID, and now it's got moved for tomorrow. Okay. All right, so you're going to talk about your ther- you're going to talk about this with your therapist tomorrow. I don't know what your therapist is going to say, but what I, if I had to make a prediction about what they say, or you know what I've heard people's therapists say when this issue comes up, is that you, I get it, you're an empathetic guy, you're someone that cares about other people, and so the idea that somebody would harm themselves because of like you leaving them quote because of you leaving them we have no Mm -hmm. idea why anyone does anything really ultimately um that's not your responsibility Uh, uh, other people's happiness and well-being is never your responsibility really yeah but that's the thing I really have problems with this because I'm not putting myself first I'm always thinking about it the other person, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's hard to do, and again, there's something there, right? I think there's something there, because there's a delicate balance between selflessness and selfishness that a lot of people have, a, myself included, have a lot of trouble striking that balance. But you do need to realize that other people's happiness is not something that is within your control or else you'll just be a slave to it your entire life you know I don't know how old you are how old are you uh, 22 22 okay great this is something yeah. and I'm sure you're going to talk about this all your next therapy session and I'm sure your real therapist will know exactly what to say but you need to nip this in the bud because you you can't be living your life at the whim of other people all the time. And you got to realize that their happiness is ultimately their own work, just as your happiness is your own work. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. What do you do? You said you do IT. But, hmm? Yeah, I'm in IT. What's Germany like? Is it nice? I kind of want to go. It's nice. It's pretty nice when you're having home office and you basically doesn't have to move an inch. Where, uh, what city in Germany? Uh, I'm near Cologne, I would say. Cologne. I don't Not even know what that stuff, is. You know? I don't know why I asked what city in Germany because I only know. I can. I think. I think I can. I. I think I can only name three cities in Germany. I know there's Berlin. All right, I can name one city in Germany. <laughs> John, good luck to you, and yeah. um, 
You got Tell it, your brother. therapist I said hello. Thanks. Good night, John. Thanks, I will. John, 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 John. I liked John. Hello? Hello? How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you, Kick? I'm doing good, Ryan. Ryan, it says here you want to know if it's a good idea to move 900 miles away all by yourself. Yeah. Mm. Uh, where, where, are we, where are we moving to? Uh, Ohio. Where are we moving from? Florida. Florida to Ohio. The classic down up. Down to up. Drive. <laughs> Uh, all right, so tell me yeah. what's going on in Florida, and then tell me what's going on in Ohio. Some, uh, some big life changes, you know, separated from my partner of almost eight years. Being in this area is a little depressing. I, uh, I visited Ohio about a month ago by myself, drove up, spent some time up there, made some friends, saw the sights, and I really enjoyed it. So I kind of made the last second decision to move up there. Have you found a place? I've been looking on the rental apps and, and whatnot, looking around. Uh, cost of living is cheaper up there, you know, with uh, everything that's going on. So I, I think it might be good, but I, I wanted to get uh, an unbiased opinion on it. Right, so the fact that you called me is signaling that you have some apprehension about it, whether or not founded. What 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 is your apprehension? Um, just moving that far away from all of my family by myself. You know, I'd be packing my car up with my closest possessions, driving the ten hours and hoping it works out. You know, man, not to make this about me, but I just did that, actually. I just did that, like, a month or so ago. And... Really? Yeah, yeah. And my the philosophy, and this is me talking to myself right now, um, is that life is short, Right? And I think it all kind of depends on what you value. I know for me, when I die, I really want to feel like I lived some bit of a storied life, you know, of, of, Uh of varied, of varied experiences. And I feel like living in different places is part of that. So even though you are leaving behind a lot of comfort, you're rolling the dice in an interesting way. You're allowing the possibility for new places and new things to become part of your life story. And diversify it and make it that much more comfortable. And it's very hard to roll those dice and take that risk. But your life will be a little bit more colorful as a result. If that's important to you. I don't know if it is. And that's what I was thinking. When I went up there by myself, I kind of threw myself out there. I went out. I made some friends. I was talking with new people, you know, people I had never known before. I was walking around the city by myself. And one of the friends I made, I was talking with him about it when I came back home. And he he was like, yeah, man, that, that sounds good. You know, with my line of work, you know, I could get a job fairly easily and I'd be able to make it. But I just I, I was a little apprehensive because I'd be going by myself you know, almost 900 miles away, starting a whole new life by myself. And I was a little worried. I I am still a little worried that it may not work out, but I I have confidence that at my age, I 
could start a life in a new area that me or my family has never been to. You know, I can make something of myself in a new area and just kind of live my life as who I am versus basing it off of somebody else. Right, right. When you move away from all your friends and family, there's also this very interesting opportunity you have to, like, as you just said, see who you are and develop who you are um, under no influence from other people. That's a really important thing to do because you kind of become the equivalent of the five people you hang out with the most. And when you go to a new place and you're not hanging out with those people... You're given a opportunity to find out other sides of yourself that might be awakened by the people that you meet or the things you see. And again, when we're talking about building a colored life experience, we're not only finding new things about a place, we're also finding out new things about ourselves as we're trying new stuff. And talking to new people who bring out different sides of us. You know? Yeah. So I think there's a lot of yeah, value in doing it. That. And, you know, yeah, man, I'm a, I'm about your age. And uh, personally, I feel like the, the more in my life I'm able to pack up, move, and start again, the more I feel, I feel very empowered by that. You know, if I can pack up move, live somewhere for a couple years, pack up, move again, live somewhere for a couple years, pack up, move again, you know, by, by the time I'm, you know, whatever, old and settled, I'll, I, I'll have, I'll have that much more wisdom and experience being a person in different places. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of value to that. Yeah, I, I thought the same thing with me still being, you know, relatively young. I can, you know, plant myself somewhere else, spread out a little bit, and if it comes down to it, move again and, and expand my horizons as as far as my body will let me. Yeah, man. G you know, good luck to you, Ryan. Uh, this was this was a good call. It was good. To, I felt like I was talking to myself here because, as I said, well, well, I, just, you, I just I, did I this. really appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, man. Have a good rest of the night. You too. I love you, Gek. Love you too, Ryan. Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. No, I really felt like I was talking to myself just then. Because, um, yeah, I just moved across the country uh, about a month ago. And, yeah, as I was talking to Ryan just now, I was, like, remembering all the reasons why. Not to, again, make this about me, but I was remembering all the reasons why I did that. Uh... Because I want to live a colorful life. Talk to a bunch of people. See a bunch of things. Go a bunch of places. And then die. It sounds nice. But you gotta get out of your comfort zone. That's very hard to do. Every weekend goes on the line. Taking your phone calls every night.